So hi guys, uh, welcome to the second uh, video in the series, which will be the first one where we actually build anything. Um, so this is the Haviland Mosquito B Mark IV, and I googled that, so IV is definitely 4 after googling it. So uh, let's crack on with it. There is one problem I need to tell you about, nothing major. Um, I did actually start filming this and I was chopping all the bits off and I did all the spiel and that was then when I noticed that uh, I hadn't hit the record button. So what you'll see is when we go table down um, you will see that all the bits are prepared. Um, there will be plenty of opportunity for me to show you but well do I need to show you how to trim bits off and file them anyway. Anyway let's see how I get on. So here I am table down uh, so we're looking at doing the first three stages uh, so I might as well pull up the instructions so the stages that I'm aiming to do on this video is stage one which is the uh, engine nacelles um, and then once we've done that we will do the wing under surface and then we will do the wing assembly now when I was looking at stage one I was looking at um, let me just remove that for a minute. Um, so it wants us to paint this bit silver and I was looking at um, maybe getting away with painting it after I've assembled the, the actual nacelle and uh, as you can see here from the dry fit quite easy to do that. Um, so this can all be painted silver um, not a problem. Um, but then when I actually came to dry fit the exhaust, I don't know if this is the right way around, we've got the exhaust there and then I don't know which way around these go. Um, once this goes in it's all going to be covered up um, so I really need to be painting these exhausts before I glue them in um, and then obviously once we're going to be doing stage two and three uh, this bit needs to be painted before uh, I start gluing and then the cells will go in something like that. That might be the wrong way around actually. It might be the wrong wing. Who knows with me? Um, but it's good, yeah, so the nacelle, oh that is actually the wrong way around. Um, it needs to go, yeah, it's, it's that way around. Anyway, it doesn't matter, I'm just showing you anyway. Um, so that goes in and then obviously that needs to be painted before we, we glue that on. Um, so I've then decided I'm gonna paint the parts before I actually uh, glue it together. Now the paint call outs that it's asking for is uh, XF56 which is a metallic grey. Um, I'm actually going to be using gunmetal grey uh, which is this one um, and then you'll see that we need um, AS12. Now AS12 is a spray paint um, and it's, uh, it's a bare metal silver so I'm actually going to be using this one which is aluminium um, and the reason I'm using aluminium is because they also uh, in stage um, one of the stages um, oh do you know what I now can't find it there is a stage somewhere where they're calling out for silver X11 and X11 is actually silver um, so this is a bit of a brighter silver, this is aluminium. So I'm going to use this in place of um, uh, AS12. That's going to be where I need X11. Um, and gunmetal grey is going to be this in place of XF56. There is one more colour call out. Um, and a lot of purists are going to complain to me. Um, you'll see here on stage two we need one part XF5, uh, three parts XF21, one part XF65. 
Now, those three colours are um, flat green, which is XF5, so it's one part flat green, uh, three part sky, which is a blue, and one part um, field grey. Um, but I've also noticed that in a later stage, I'll show you the assembly uh, step when we get to it, um, but we want exactly the same colour inside the um, cockpit. So um, I'm actually going to be going with uh, AK Interactive. Um, can we have a focus? Uh, AK11847 REF Cockpit Grey. Um, now I have had a discussion with someone before about the colour of the uh, Spitfire interior and I do have a Humvol equivalent. Um, this is not the same colour um, but I'm going to play by the rules of my model, I do what I want with it and this is the colour I'm going to go for for World War II REF cockpits. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think if anyone says, it's very similar to the Tamiya one, um, but it's not the same colour, um, but it isn't the same as the Humboldt one. Um, so, I'm going to be doing, um, obviously I've already cut the parts out, um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to be painting the parts and then I'm going to glue them together and that's that's all I'm going to do for stage three and then next week uh, we will start on the main landing gear and I, I just think I think it's such an unusual model for me because so often we start with a cockpit and then we close the fuselage up we're not actually starting to the cockpit until we get to about stage seven nine and ten and then we're not going to close the fuselage up until we get to i've got the instructions up i do apologize um so yeah we're not going to do anything on the cockpit until seven in fact that's not even really technically the top cockpit um the main cockpit comes in about stage nine um, and then we close the fuselage up in stage 15 which i i just i think is interesting um, and as you can see, like the cockpit is going to be done in that uh, XF5, 21 and 65 mix. So I'm replacing that with um, with this. And of course, the, one of the problems with mixing paints up is that if you're doing, you need to mix a paint up in step two. When by the time you get to stage um, stage 10, which might be weeks away, depending on how much time you can spend on each model you now need to make that paint up exactly the same as before um, so yeah call me lazy if you want um, but I'm going to use a ready-made paint and um, there's one thing that I'm not going to do and that is in step two um, it's asking us to put in piece F1 into this hole here and I'm going to do that right at the very end for the reason being that F1 is one of the clear pieces is there um, so I'm gonna pop that on right at the very end um, if I was to stick that on now um, because they are being glued in from the outside um, it's actually being glued in from let me just check this let me double check no no I was wrong yes they are big right so yes so scrub that but i'm not going to be putting that on now anyway um i will put it on uh, as late as i possibly can i might even consider painting these um before i uh, before i finish uh before i glue them but yes of course yeah they will be glued from the inside but yeah i will leave that for this stage anyway so uh, i'm going to crack on with it Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is priming all of the parts. This time I'm going to be using Styrolex Grey. Last time I used black, um, but I've decided to go with grey because it's going to be a camouflage pattern. Um, I'm going to go for the pre-shading of panel lines rather than the uh, black basing.
so next up is aluminium so all the parts uh, that are being called out as needing AS12 I'm doing in uh, aluminium so next up all the parts that require XF56 I'm doing in gunmetal And then uh, all the parts that's requiring the mix of XF521 and 61 I'm doing in AK11847 REF Cockpit Grey Green by AK Interactive. So after having a little dry fit, I always love a dry fit. Um, I'm doing um, one bit I forgot to mention. There's some parts that need uh, doing in X18 semi-gloss black. Um, I did have a bit of a struggle with this mainly because I over thinned it. Okay, next up is a little bit of an experiment, XF64 red brown, really really thinned, just sprayed onto the end of the exhaust pipe, so I don't think the exhaust pipes are going to be seen, so it's a really good opportunity to sort of experiment with a little bit of wear and tear. Okay, so I'm extremely happy with those results. Uh, the paint's gone down really really smooth really really nice um, so these I'm quite pleased with I've just made them a little touch brown um, be honest with you I was going to put some clear blue down as well but I don't have any um, these are pretty much going to be hidden up so I thought what a wonderful opportunity to experiment if it all went wrong you know if it goes wrong on something that you're not going to see it doesn't really matter does it so uh, let's crack on with the glue up now obviously I've, I had all these parts assembled together um, so um, obviously as I've sprayed them all um, I've got all the parts muddled up so obviously these halves are quite easy to work out because one has the bit on the end for the propeller and uh, one doesn't so they're easy enough just to pair up um, but obviously what I need to try and pair up now is um, uh, is the exhaust so wish me luck
Okay, so I've allowed them to dry. A um, few issues I had when I was gluing. Um, the first one on one of these, I can't remember which one it was, as I was gluing the nacelles together, um, I, I forgot which side, I just didn't even think. Um, but I actually applied the glue on the painted side rather than from behind. So I'm going to just need to touch that up a little bit, um, which I'll do in a moment. Um, I think it was this one actually, it's quite a bad, can you see that there, obviously where I put the glue on, it's just stripped the paint away. Um, this bit, I'd, I'd got absolutely obsessed with getting these, I wasn't so bothered about the actual angle, I was I was more obsessed with getting them the same, and as soon as I put these nacelles in, it just pushed that down, and that won't budge. And that's mainly because of the nacelle rather than the actual glue. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really need to obsess about that so much. Um, and the next thing is, I forgot to put the glass in. Um, and these are glued too tight now to undo. Um, so what I'll do is I will paint this as normal. Um, but what I'll do is um, I'll get some... Uh, I haven't got any to hand, but you can get some clear glue and all you need to do is just get an old brush um, that's too thick but we imagine this is the brush and what you do is you just put it in there and you just keep painting around and then you will actually fill that hole uh, it's very similar to PVA glue and then it will fill that and then it will dry clear so I think we'll get away with that um, so the only thing left now then is to touch up the, uh, the uh, paint uh, the silver areas um, I think the greens quite nice uh, and I think we can weather that um, I might there's a couple of little cables going through there I might just see if I can just touch them up with a silver and then I'll uh, I'll pop a wash in them um, so what I'm gonna do in the next episode is I'm gonna start work on the landing gear stage four five and six and then while we're doing that, we can then um, fix this up. We can, you know, rub down any bad areas. Um, there's a couple of bits on the wing that need sorting out. So basically, we can we can work. We can do with stage four, five, and six what we've done with one, two, and three. Then going back to one, um, I'm just sort of sorting things out. Um, weather bits that are going to need weathering. Um, yeah, and just uh, just crack on with it, and then what I'll do then to finish off this video, I'll just uh, I'll grab a nice brush, uh, this one, and uh, where's me aluminium gone? And then we'll just we'll just touch that up to finish. So this is seven seven point seven oh one aluminium, and uh, I don't actually do you know I had there we are. I knew I had some pads somewhere. Just use it's only one color, so I'll just use a uh, bit of a tip for you guys. If you um, you get any bottle caps, milk bottle caps are really good. Um, these are some uh, some I stayed in a hotel once and they had uh, cereals in a little bowl and they had little lids on them. Uh, another thing that's really really good. Um, there's a there's a certain crisp brand that once you once you pop, you can't stop. Um, those lids are extremely good uh, for paint palettes so I'm only doing one color so I'll just use this uh, drinks bottle cap and I'll just pop one so this is the this is the paint that's actually designed for airbrushing but as you're about to see it works really well with a brush equally as well and I think that's not been shaken well enough. So, see, the only trouble with these is that they're, they're quite old, and um, if you don't shake them really well, you just get a watery colour. Um, so I did when I primed this I was considering painting it 
um, but I thought well it'll probably get messed up and I'm glad I didn't paint it there we go so that's covered that up I'm not going to bother with the sides not a color difference the trouble with the trouble is the difference between wet paint and uh, dry paint there is a color difference but once it dries it usually goes down it darkens a little bit so this is actually quite bright there we go so I'm really happy with that there's a little bit of work to do um, mainly with the sandpaper um, but we'll do that as we do the uh, uh, the main landing gear um, the main landing gear right and we will attach the landing gear then this will get put away and uh, we'll start working the cockpit so I hope you enjoyed that little video um, we've got something already oh look at that I managed to split uh, obviously missed with that so um, yeah so at least we've got something fairly recognizable uh, one of the things I've always noticed about the, the mosquito is it's almost like the wings are on backwards um, quite often you'll have aircraft and the wings are more that shape um, but with the mosquito it's it's as though the wings are on backwards and that's one of the main features for me right guys so let's say I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next week when we'll be doing more work Okay guys, a little bit of a bonus for you because I'm so impatient. Um, I did cut out the fuselage and uh, I've cut this little bit out. Now this is uh, later on, uh, there's going to have various bits and bobs attached to this. I think there's going to be like a, a bomb bay and that. And this is obviously going to also form uh, the struts which will help support the wings. and. Uh, yeah, I'm impatient, um, but this is absolutely amazing. The way that it's engineered. Um, don't worry if you if you're not watching. I mean, obviously, if you're not watching this, you're not going to hear me say this. Um, but this is a little bonus for people that are watching. And all of a sudden, this isn't fitting. Is it the wrong way round? No, it was the right way round. So um, yeah, obviously, this this is all. We'll go through all of this once it's done so you see you've got two supports there and then you've got a little um, well, I don't know what you'd want to call that you got a little knob nub there and this bit is going to match with that little hole there uh, so we want to go in like that and this is the hard bit is getting that bit under there obviously this would be so much easier once the fuselage is glued in then there's a little lining up notch and then this one goes in on this side and you know we'd only built up to the wings and and I said that it's absolutely beautiful just based on the wings but you know I need a new rating system now because look at that the engineering on this is fantastic as I say there's loads of stuff to go in there um, but wow I'm just super impressed. Anyway, that's it. I'm definitely going now.